Alright, today I'm going to tackle uh, removing this stereo unit right here and I'm going to recoup the space behind that cabinet and then I'm going to put a different unit in uh, that's going to be much better than this heap right here. So that's what, we're going to, that's what I'm going to do today. Believe it or not, there are only two screws holding this thing in place. And, uh, you know, and I think the reason why is once I take this out you can see they didn't do a very good job uh, cutting the hole size because the hole's kind of too big and a couple of the screw holes aren't put in there nice but look at all this space behind here I mean this thing is that deep and it's using all this cupboard space so I'm looking forward to getting that space back Taking this out, not a big deal. Uh, it has a wiring harness, so I just disconnected the harness and disconnected the antenna, and the radio pulls right out. And what's pretty cool is on the radio, uh, right on the top, the, all the speakers are color coded. So when I go to hook up my next unit, I can just read this, and and then I can see, you know, who's who in the zoo here. So. That's going to be pretty handy. Okay, so this bottom cross piece and then this top cross piece are held in place by three screws uh, going into there. And then there's three up here. And there's three going this way and three down here. And then one that shoots down and one that shoots up. And I pretty much have to use this mirror to see them, and this is a real pain. But, I'm going to get her done. And here's something I thought that was kind of shitty. So they cut a hole for the wires to come down, and then the, they just left the trash in the compartment. So that white part right there is where they cut the hole out for the wires. You know, they couldn't take that out and throw it away, but anyhow, I guess they thought no one ever coming in here. My initial plan was to try to just unscrew those and bring it out in one piece and maybe repurpose that wood for something else, but it's getting to be too, big, too much of a pain in the ass, so it's time for plan B. It should be much easier to unscrew at this point. Okay, I got the pieces out and uh, it's a pretty good size opening. It turns out that this piece right here and this piece are actually part of the whole cabinet and I know that this is just a veneer on here and I don't want to cut this and expose wood so I'm gonna to have to be happy with this opening right here and then just to give you some uh, uh, context about how much wasted space there was. Here's the radio. And you can see it pretty much takes up all that space um, that was pretty much being wasted. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these wires and I'm going to run them over here and out this other side and then I'll put shelf in here for audio equipment and then to make this look clean I'm going to take uh, some of the facade material that I used or that I uh, salvaged from when I took the bed out so that's just like uh, this right here that I got covering the furnace right now just more of that and fast pan huh and I'm going to put it up and I'm going to make it uh, level with this piece right here so it just looks you know it's a full rough and uh, 
Otherwise, the cabinet's in pretty good shape. This is a screw hole that's bunged out. That was from when they installed the radio. That, that wasn't me. And same thing here. This is another... Uh, when they put that radio in, they didn't make the... Uh, they didn't make that cutout wide or correct. It was, it's too wide. And then here's the same thing. Uh, that's from them. And then these screw holes are from... Uh, whoops. These screw holes are from the piece I just took out. I don't know why in the world they needed six screws to hold in that piece of wood. All it was doing was supporting about a nine ounce radio. Um, so I'm pretty happy uh, with this space that I'm going to recover. Okay, this is the weirdest thing. This black wire is uh, the ground. Is that the black with the white stripe? And it's a DC negative. So, but it comes into this wire nut, and there's two wires connected to it into the DC ground. But this is the wire that goes. Whoops! This is the wire that goes to the battery or to the uh, radio. And then this orange with white is what you would hook up to your ignition if it was like in a car. So when you turn your ignition off, it secured power to the radio. And then this is the uh, power to the battery. So these are this is this is weird on a couple levels. I have two wires coming in and they're wire nutted together right there. And then the power to the ignition wire goes into this nut. And then they got this uh, uh, cable right here. Or this is, is a, a connector. And then there's another power thing. But why in the world would there be two positive and two negatives running to the battery? That I don't get that at all. So I'm gonna when I take this apart, I'm gonna uh, test it with my voltmeter and see what's going on and see if that's a live wire right there. But that's that's pretty weird. And then the other thing that they did that's pretty cheesy is okay they cut the wires for the left and right um, and basically what they did is this is the wiring that goes to this to that speaker and that speaker and basically you just have it's mono it's not stereo because they're both connected to the same radio output and then they clipped the other ones. I mean, how lazy is that? So, you know, pretty dissatisfied with uh, Keystone's stereo installation at this point. After thinking about it for a second, I remembered that this radio wasn't the only thing in this camper that runs on DC. So the reason there's two wires is because this power is going to somewhere else in the camper besides just this radio. So. Um, I got to make sure I don't monkey at my 12 volt system with this uh, and, and disconnect myself. But yeah, that's what's going on there. Okay, I've got it all sorted out now, and I've disconnected the harness. And this is my uh, negative wire right here. This is my DC positive wire. And here's where I'm starting to get really kind of aggravated with uh, Keystone because this right here uh, these are the wires going to my inside speakers so basically they were running mono which explains why I thought this thing sounded like shit because it was wired stupidly and I was only getting a mono signal uh, and not only that but I had two speakers sharing the power that was supposed to be going to one speaker and then this right here this um, this is the wire that goes their speakers on the outside of this trailer and so they did the same thing they had one side of a stereo band supplying sound to both my outside speakers so I mean just absolutely terrible but I'll get that corrected except for I gotta find at least with this one I have both wires so I can run um, I can hook it up correctly now I gotta find where this connects because there's another set of wires that uh, connected to this that's providing my outside source and if I want to get left and right sound I gotta find where this connects to so that might be a challenge 
Okay, got my uh, fake top in. Looks like a cabinet now. I just got to get a door. I might give Keystone a call and see if they got any of these sitting around, and I could just get one and put it on there, and it would. The door would be bigger than the hole, but it would look uniform across the top, and and that would be nice. Otherwise, I'll just put some shelves in there. I don't know that I'd be able to make a door that match, so I'm gonna have to think about that a little bit. And then my wires are just coming out the side, and I'll be able to hook those up to my next audio unit.